What is up, everybody? Welcome back to On The Real. We are coming to you from Real Bros Studio in Phoenix, Arizona. And today we have a pretty awesome guest. His name's Tyler Pretty Chandler. awesome. Pretty awesome. I mean, pretty I'm, awesome. I'm pretty sure he's awesome. Yeah, pretty epic. You can, you can X out the Pretty. <laughs> pretty. Um, his name's Tyler Chandler, and he is a filmmaker, photographer, dealing primarily in automotive space right now, but he is shifting more to commercial work. And he most recently joined us on our trip up north to shoot a spec commercial for a new piece of equipment we have. So, uh, And he's been... Uh, He's been around a while with us and yeah. some other stuff. Yeah. We like having him around. He gets a lot of the, the dope, silky, smooth. Like He shoots dope shit. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what we do. Is what we so do, yeah. So nice it works fit. out. Yeah. Nice fit. Yeah, it works out. Oh, How's it going? Guys. Yeah. Good. 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 It's welcome, going welcome. good. Welcome to the the pod of the cast yeah. <laughs> inside the studios. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So uh, where were we last week? Flagstaff. We were? Cinder Hills. Ah. Yeah. One of my favorite places. It is legit. Right. Yeah, that was my first time. That was insane. We it's another world up there. But why do we have we had to go up there because of heat, obviously. It's in the summer. Um what is it? Is this August? Uh, what month is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, August. it's August. Okay. Yeah, it's August. It right. is Which day is, uh, 107 of quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, even know. Real. But it is ridiculously hot here in Phoenix. It's like 113 today or yesterday. And it's been constant and it hasn't cooled down. So I don't know. We well we really haven't we will I've released it by now, but the Alta, we got the Alta 8 Pro, um, and it was kind of like an aerial shoot. It was an aerial shoot we were going up to Flagstaff with to go do like a bunch of cool stuff, shoot drones on drones and black arms on drones and vice versa. Um, but we couldn't fly the Alta here in Phoenix, unfortunately, because of the heat, you know, because that thing's limited to like 103 degrees or something or something weird like that. or something. Yeah, was, it's close to where we are now. <laughs> exactly, pretty much. Um, so we had to go up to Flagstaff. Flagstaff is like beautiful temperatures you know i think it was like 83 as a high there as a high that's like that's and a bad day yeah, yeah no as a high it was great so we had to go up there and we went to the cinder hills which is like in the same place it looks like the moon it's just like a wild looking landscape and it's which all they lava actually rock. do lun- lunar testing they right do now. well they did yes they did. They did. in the 60s in the 60s fun, fun fact the nasa tested the uh the moon rovers up in flagstaff on cinder hills because the materials today's fun fact of the day pr- presented by alex Freer. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's really cool. So it's all volcanic rock there. I don't. What, what does anyone know? Like what volcano is Sunset from? Crater? Okay. Yeah, I was the big one Sunset that was in the background. Crater. Oh, that the was the volcano. Yeah. That's the volcano. Really? Is it totally dead now? No, they're not. They're never dead. Yeah, but it just blew never up. Go dormant. It so is it still? Is it still like, there? It's just there. Is it still active or no? Yeah, I mean underneath, deep down, but like it doesn't. It doesn't spew lava out of the top right no, now. Well, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, but, but it might one it day. Like, yeah, it's not one like day. one of them cartoon yeah. volcanoes. One day it might go off. You, you see on the movies. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, this is like an OHV uh, playground for Can-Ams and Polaris's and any off, literally any off-road vehicle you have, you can go out here and play for free. And then the 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 land is it's massive. The amount of property that you have to play on is like huge. And there's carved out trails and you know just having like fun like roundabouts around trees i don't even know what you call those things but they're like super deep and they're like sideways and you have to like really gas it to get around them anyway there's lots of fun stuff all over the place it's practically endless yeah i mean we didn't even get to explore probably like an eighth of that place and it's free to film there too so like you don't have any permits or anything that we know of (laughs) but we go up there anyway because where we test a lot of our gear because you know you got dirt you know you got dirt a lot of dirt and there's a lot of uh the the train is just crazy like off-road like it's just sometimes it's really smooth and sometimes it's like I don't know. It's not. So it's really good to test like our equipment out there and and to see like where, how we can push it and, and it how looks we, wild. Yeah. And it looks wild. It just looks like looks like you're on the moon. Looks a different place. And the higher you get, the crazier it looks. So at the base, yeah, you have your trees and you have everything there, but once you go climb up, you're above that tree line. And I think it's like what, 8,000 feet, 8,000 something feet. I Is think. it really that much? Yeah, no, it's high. Wow. I never understood how big that place was until we get up, got up to the very no, top. No, and, and we, we didn't even go all there. the way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I want to go back and go, like, continue to just keep going and see how far it goes. Yeah. On that on that one hill where yeah. we went up the side, yeah. Where we filmed yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Anyway. It's, but, yeah. It's deep. So, we had uh, we had two Can-Ams out there, which were legit. Um, two black ones. Two turbos. And they're nuts. We love them. The suspension travel is insane. We did... But then we did roll one of them twice. But twice. <laughs> That's, yeah. Two times. That's because we were having too much fun and we were getting the shot. No, we you just got to fucking send it. Yeah. If well, you're filming, you got to send it. Alex sent it when we I, weren't filming. <laughs> uh, and it was fucking awesome. And I sent it when we 
weren't really filming, but we were shooting photos. Thomas. Shooting behind the scenes. Yeah, so we were shooting like photos for it. We got some sick photos. So but, keep an eye out for the gif of John rolling. The oh cannon. God. It it's amazing. Get a good slow motion. It's actually it not too. that bad, you know, because I was going up a, like a what was it like a forty foot wall? I don't even know. And I was trying to just kind of rooster tail it up the top, and it was really deep there. So like I hit a I hit a rut and slowly kind of just put it on her side. It was really deep. I mean, even our campsite <laughs> was hard to walk around in. I know. Like you get a workout just from walking around to go get like an atomos or something across. But the, it's not like sinking. You know what I mean? It's like it's just enough to like it's feel weird. like you're in a very like muddy situation like I you, guess, you know yeah. you're, you're kind of sloshing yeah. around i would well, say that's weird weird material we yeah. went up there late last year to film a lot of the ex camera promo stuff mm-hmm. and it was raining a lot more back then and the there ground, was snow on the, the ground. ground was a yeah was there was still snow on the ground yeah. and the ground was a lot more firmer mm-hmm. being out there in the summer now it was like super loose and dusty but it looked looked really cool on camera yeah I'll say that yeah no doubt we worked we shot a bunch of behind the scenes stuff and then we worked on a little what could be considered a spec piece yes yeah so the idea was going out there is like this was our time we put a, so i mean you, you guys know us we go out all the time we shoot a lot of different stuff you know we go out we um kind of promote material for our own marketing sake right so to get out what we do so and this project was like testing um, flying the new alta that we got and then kind of promoting it so promoting most of our aerial work we were trying to do it's like FPV, the Alta, the Inspired 2, you know, the basics of all that stuff. Um, and just get really dope shots with it. And then potentially also create a can spec out of it. So we go out there in mind, you know, like, like we always go out there, even though we're spending money on our own stuff, we try to get content that we can push out and then, you know, kind of push out on social media and then better market ourselves. Yeah. I and mean, if you're, if you're in commercial, you should be able to market yourself and Correct. shoot commercials for yourself. So. Yeah. So that's our, you know, going back to like podcast number one is the self-investment. We continue to do that till, till now. So yeah. Anyway, so I'm curious to get Tyler's take yes. because this is your, your second big outing with us. You, is this your you, third pos- pod, 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 <laughs> can't even talk. First Bobcast. podcast, pod, pod. I haven't yeah. had my food yet, guys. All right. So relax. <laughs> is this your third post? You guys Jesus, I did it again. <laughs> Holy shit. Once it gets in your head, you can't get it out. Y'all should see is this your first podcast? Yes, it is Tyler. my first podcast. Oh, we're okay, taking this podcast, Cherry. We are. We're popping <laughs> it right now. Um, it took so, me a while to get that out of my mouth. Yeah. Jesus. All right, yeah. continue, I'm, Alex. I'm curious to get your, uh, your take. It's your second outing with us. You went down to Tucson with us when we did Matt Hoggins' drift car. On which the, was lit. The old NASCAR track, which was fucking sick. Yeah. I'm going to do that again soon. How, how was it? It's it, From the first time I came out with you guys or the second time, it's, it's an extreme experience, you know, coming from me working smaller gigs mm-hmm. with just local businesses and stuff like mm-hmm. that, walking around with my handheld Movi. Yep. And then... Seeing you guys hook up, you know, the ca- uh, the <laughs> camera car yeah. is absolutely insane. And then seeing that thing work and seeing how you guys work behind that is also like a pretty crazy experience. Yeah. From coming, somebody, we, coming from somebody who works uh, alone. Yeah, no doubt. No, it's and yeah, we appreciate that. That's that's sweet. That's what we love. We love getting people involved with that kind of stuff because yeah. what's what we want to do back then. We always try to figure out how do we get involved with that stuff and like how do we do that? And, and now that we have the ability to, to do that for other people, like I want to continue to do that. You know what I mean? Like give people that opportunity yeah. to come out and like have fun and yeah. learn. Also, like, when you see like w- when you witness a fresh perspective on it, it just like reiterates the fact of like how fun it is. Yeah. You, do, you know? Well, because yeah. we threw you on the sticks Sometimes at the end of the day. Sometimes you too much, it's like yeah. the, the, end of the, day, you. the end of the day we were done filming yeah. and I'm like, we were all, it was kind of getting hot and stuff and everyone's just like, we had to go get this one last shot. Um, I think of the, was it the it was Inspire the, shooting? It was the, the Black Arm rig. shooting the Inspire, Inspire shooting the Black Arm. Right. Yeah. So we needed someone else to pilot two other drones. Um, we're like, Tyler, jump on the stick, dude. Go play with it. He's like, I've never done it. That doesn't matter. That's how, you, this is how you learn. Jump yeah. on it. And then you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Yeah, I was um, extremely nervous when you guys did that. <laughs> I didn't know what to think, and I was just, I was, yeah, I was just thrown right into it. But I think I picked up on it pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. no, you, no, you, we snagged yeah. a shot or two yeah. out of that for sure. Okay, that's it's, what we do though. We like throwing not, people in the not, deep end. It's not yeah. the easiest tracking in a UTV. That's no, that's the hardest. Is that's like when the it's worst case all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then if you've never done like the inversion on the j- on the sticks, it's like that can. Mess with you too, like your mental, like when right. you want yeah. to the airplane shot. mode. Yeah. Airplane, airplane mode. mode. Yeah. I've I've used my Spectrum controller with my Movi before on airplane mode. No, no, uh, he, on game. This is like the RC. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 like yeah, the DJI yeah. MX controller. I I can't even say that it's anywhere it's similar, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's. It, I guess that kind of gave me like a little bit of an advantage on that because mm-hmm. I kind of understand it, but yeah. it yeah. was it was extremely hard once we're bouncing around and like yeah, just. 
It's legit. No control over anything going on, but you're trying to <laughs> yeah. gain control. Right? What is that called? Controlled chaos. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, it's funny because there's like, I think one of the reasons why we assimilate with you and we bring you on projects in addition to the fact that you shoot dope shit like us is <laughs> you have kind of a similar story of us in the sense of coming up in kind of the automotive realm mm -hmm. and like when we were with hog and you were showing us pictures of your, your homemade cloud mount that you hang off the back of your car to yeah. do rollers and like yeah. we did this we do the same exact stuff like the closet hanger rig that mm -hmm. we built back in the day for for doing rollers because we couldn't afford the block armor we right. couldn't afford pursuit so we like build it yourself yeah you gotta do what how you gotta, do. You gotta like, do yeah but that's the drive we look for and okay. that's the driver continuing to look for yeah. so yeah, we appreciate that yeah, work and determination. Not a lot of people have that. People just think they have a camera and I can go shoot dope shit well, because I, I have a cool camera. We already I, had this yeah. conversation at the I campsite. Just, no, oh, I we did camp, by the way, people. That was really yeah. cool. So we did a, a day of shooting camp and then back to shooting in the early morning. And yeah. we had two other guests show up too as well, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. I just had a post about this on Facebook the other day, though. It was like most people in the comments or in the DMs, they're always asking, how much does that camera rig cost rather than how long did it take you to learn the skill sets to be there or how do i get my hands and on? i think that's the wrong mentality and i think yeah. that's the mental the opposite of that is the mentality that we look for mm -hmm. and i think you you definitely have it tyler where it's not i can't do this because i can't afford this piece of equipment mm -hmm. and it's more so i can figure out a way to do this with the means that i have right now sure yeah and that's the most valuable skill set as a filmmaker and media just in life in general because mm -hmm. like i mean you can't buy your way out of certain problems. No. And if you have that mentality where you're just looking at, looking at us from a outside perspective and saying, damn, I can't do that because I don't have the ability to afford that tools and equipment. Like the reality is it's taken a long time and a lot of hard work and sleepless nights to, to get to this point And a lot of, a lot of risks and, and, and a little bit of luck to get here. Yeah. So you can't always luck. You can't have that mentality. Yeah. You just have to have to find a way. And if it's your true passion, and it's something you really want to do. You're gonna you're gonna find a way to do it. Of course. Yeah, so like, how did I mean? Speaking of that, it was a good good ending point there. How did you kind of get your start into what you do? You know, and kind um, of explain what you do right now to you know. So I, I guess I'll start at the very beginning. Yeah. I uh, I had a Honda, and I really wanted to take pictures of it, but I just picked up a GoPro until I met a good friend of mine, Josh, who um, he did like automotive photography that you'd see on Instagram or something like that, mm -hmm. like just of stance cars. And I was sure. like, that's the coolest thing. You know, I want to do that. Um, he's like, go out there, go buy a camera. I'll teach you the basics. You got to take it from there. And ever since I have not put the camera down, not even for a second. And it's truly blossomed into something that I could have never imagined. Um, awesome. I started diving into video a little bit. Once a family friend sent me out, uh, what was it? A, Canon T3i, mm -hmm. and I had a slider. I bought a slider off Amazon. That was Amazon. the first camera I used. Legit. To <laughs> I bought a slider off Amazon, and I made like this little thank you video to send back to him because oh, wow. I was like stoked on it, and it was the stupidest thing. <laughs> but um, then it kind of turned into me shooting just any chance that I could get. I still had yeah. a full time job. I worked at a warehouse, mm -hmm. and every time on the weekends, I would just get out and shoot until like. 2 a.m. or something oh, yeah. go back home and edit and just not get any sleep right and then a good friend of mine taylor who i'm pretty sure you guys know variant yep. oh yeah yeah uh he messaged me and he he was talking about creating a uh i guess you can call it like a marketing mm -hmm. team or yeah. something like that we uh he told me to quit my job and really? from there we would um god what's what is, what is we, we started working for um God, what was her name? Uh, <laughs> Blank. Yeah. Wait, where's the crickets? I don't know. They were, yeah, there you go. Get the crickets. Uh, I don't even remember. <laughs> I think it's this one. It's the bottom yeah, it's one. that one. It's there <laughs> we go. Hey. There it is. There it is. Um, Notorious Auto Design. So they, they just did okay. like a bunch of like classic vehicles and stuff like that in-house. And we rented out office space from them in return for video. And that was the first oh, time wow. ever jumping into what I was doing without anything else. Right. I was like my only means of income at the time. Oh, nice. And then we started jumping into uh, wedding videos and stuff like mm -hmm. that because that stuff really pays well. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I broke yeah. back out of that after I realized it's not worth the amount of stress that goes yep. into it. You'll eventually <laughs> learn. Everyone's been there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess that's really it. Like I just started doing a lot of YouTube stuff and then I ended up going back to my job 
and then quit again after I realized I don't want to work for anybody else. I'd rather work for myself. <laughs> yeah, you had you so. had that itch or that you oh, had yeah. that little taste, right? The oh, taste yeah. of blood. Oh yeah, to work by yourself. Yeah, for yourself. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So now what you're doing now is uh, what, like where are you at now? You working by yourself still? Is this full time yeah, so or are you? What as do you, of right what do you now, think? I'm a freelancer for okay. a lot of local businesses in cool. the automotive realm. Yep. And I know Alex mentioned earlier that I wanted to get into more commercial space. So I've been doing a lot of tactical photography and stuff like that with guns and, oh, cool. and stuff. And I'm trying to transition into creating more story pieces with yep. people. So we're um, I have a brand out in California, Standout Los Angeles which we are doing documentary style pieces on uh, local businesses to California. And nice. yeah. And I guess that's legit. Yeah. That's pretty much where I'm at right now. That's it's, awesome. Yeah, I'm not really doing anything else. So. <laughs> well, that's so cool. It's full time, full time, <laughs> full time. Uh, shit. You just like rallied through my fucking question list for you. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned, you mentioned the, the long-term documentary stuff. Yeah. Um, which I'm always super interested in because it's mm-hmm. always, especially from a, a commercial sense or like a business sense, long-term documentary stuff is always like the hardest sell to mm-hmm. the clients and stuff like that. It's more of a emotional investment yes. than a monetary investment mm-hmm. per se. Um, where'd the inspiration come from for that project? And then kind of like, how did it, how did it come to be? So my good friend Mario is also my co-owner uh, for Standout. Uh, he, with every friend that he has, he, he has him watch this um, Magnus Walker documentary. Mm-hmm. And it just yeah. goes through everything that Magnus Walker did. And that that just kind of like inspired me to like, let's tell more stories about these businesses that are kind of going out of their way and standing out rather than the other ones. Because obviously our names stand out LA. Mm-hmm. So um, we're currently in the makes of making one with um, Street Fighter LA, who just teamed up with TJ Hunt and they made Street Hunter, and so oh, yeah. they're going to be doing some pretty crazy stuff. I can't say too much Legit. about it. Legit. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, that sounds fun. Yeah. Man. I don't know what else That's to sick. say. No, it's kind of weird. It happens, yeah. it happens very organically. Yeah. I think a lot of people expect it's like cookie cutter. Like mm-hmm. you do this and this and this, and then you get here. Yeah, no. And it, it doesn't happen that way. Nope. I mean, like for God, for fuck's sake, we had COVID <laughs> this year. Oh yeah, and yeah. Like everybody's and like everybody had their plan like it this 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 and then I'm here and then it's like mm-hmm. nope that's nope. gone see you later let's yeah, figure I, this out and still find a way to do dope stuff and cool stuff so it's super awesome yeah. that you are making your way into kind of the docu yeah docu realm yeah. and stuff Just like, like that. Just like you said, it's more personable and I I feel like people's stories need to be told 100 percent in a different way. It's funny you say that though. Creating it's, a cool video. Yeah, for them and stuff. it's the cool videos and the. It's like overdone now. All these social oh, yeah. media people are using them. It's like, slow down. You know, let's get down to the roots of what it is. You know what I mean? But it's funny you say that because we're actually, we actually started it, started it already. Was the yeah. steering wheel art. Yeah. It's like yeah. our version of uh, telling people's stories. Like, that's what we like doing. Just yeah. short. You know, what was that? Two minutes? Yeah. 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 Super short. But it, it tells you. Everything was absolutely amazing on that. Like, yeah. It was that's what we love doing. So we're trying to see if we can start like a series of that where we mm-hmm. just go around and um, to local people that are doing that. Um, and just like you said, you're doing yeah. kind of in a way, um, just tell stories of people. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like that's what you learn the most from. I feel like, you know, you yeah, get this you, most you experience back end stuff or yeah. you, you can see all like the front hand stuff where mm-hmm. he's literally just coming up to shows. I've met that guy. Multiple oh times yeah, exactly. Shows. He comes up, gives me his card like every time and he talks but, to you and you need to see him. Yeah. You know, he can hardly talk, but yeah. But then seeing that, I mean, what did you think about when you saw that since you saw him come Adrian, up to you all the time? Dude, he's he's a special, like, he's a super person. Yeah, he's awesome. Like, yeah. Now that we met him and spent some time with him and, like, oof. Yeah, he's cool. No, he's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, super cool guy. But, you know, not knowing who he was, we did the same thing. We were at a car show and he came up to us and he's like, um, you know, do you guys need a stream? And we were like, uh, and who was it? Was Alex and I there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were like, oh, you know, that'd be cool. My, you know, me, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be sick. Let's do it. And he's like, oh, I'll do, I'll do it. Oh, I'll do it. You know, it'd be yeah. awesome. I'm like, oh, well, you know, we'll put your stuff all over the truck or whatever, and we'll make a story for you. Um, actually, that came out later. We didn't even tell him we were going to do that at the show. Yeah. That came yeah. out. We were like, hey, we should probably film him doing this because quarantine hit. We're like, we're not doing anything. So yeah. let's go film him. Yeah, it was a good time. And we did. It took a day to go shoot that and just an, evening, or an afternoon or whatever. And it was awesome. But he's a cool yeah. guy. And, he, you know, you thought you think you'd be like just a salesman. He's trying to get something. But then you go tell a story and it's just like way deeper. Oh, yeah. Right. It's yeah. way you get that emotional, more than you can like, think. Yeah, but once you get there it. and realize that it's like you have to deliver on the edit, you have to tell that story. Really you have to tell well. that story. 
Yeah, you have to yeah. get the same. You don't want to ruin his. Like, the interview, we got to sit in with him. We talked for like an hour. And yeah, we wrote it right there. Yeah, Alex was sitting over there just kind of jotting ideas down. Mm-hmm. And then lo and behold, we got a script and we, we kind of ran with that. But yeah, we had, to, right we had to make sure that what we were witnessing, the script we wrote, and then the visuals matched yep. all cohesively to yep. make that yeah. like. Yeah. But <laughs> I think that's what made us grow into loving that, uh, doing that type of project. Yeah. Is seeing all that come together and then the project we have after. Well, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a different type of currency. I mean, yes. there's currency in the sense of like you're getting paid or making money to yeah. do something. And then there's like an emotional fulfillment currency of why you probably started shooting photos of your car in the first place. Yeah, like exactly. It, it gave you a value to something that fulfilled you in a way and, and you want to keep finding that. Yeah. And for, in that case, it was it was super interesting to work on because it, it's like the root of what we do. And it's you're working for somebody to help them communicate their ideas mm-hmm. and their their ideals and their message. Yeah. Because like face value, when we were sitting there recording VOs and stuff like that, it was it was kind of a struggle in some aspects because you're you're hearing this person's story and what they really, we had to have a translator the, come in. Yeah, the true root of what they want to communicate, and they just haven't had access to somebody to help them tell that story right. in a way that would catch people's attention. Mm-hmm. And we really had this value that we brought to him to where. We were able to sit there, digest what he was giving us, and then turn it around creatively in a written sense for a voiceover that told exactly what he wanted to communicate. We, like, in a sense, translated, not language, but translated, like, translated his ideas yeah. to, to video content that put out and had stellar reviews back from not only people locally to us, people back in his home country of Romania, a lot of people, that piece is, like, a standout piece for us, and it's it's kind of ironic because it's a piece that happened very naturally. It wasn't very forced. It was like meeting him a few times, talking with him, and then finally saying, having the right context around us of just coming out of the quarantine and being like, we want to shoot something. Yeah. And like, here's our opportunity to shoot something. Yeah. Let's go do it. And just bare bones shoot. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's one of my favorite pieces yeah. that, that yeah. we've done. So we're now trying to year. challenge ourselves doing it, right? Now we're trying yeah. to make, make this series and challenge ourselves to be like, okay, let's make this kind of difficult for us, right? We got two lights and two cameras. What can we do with it? Well, I think, yeah, that, that stemmed from the fact that we, that's what we used in that. Correct. We so used two lights. if we can come up with that beautiful piece with that, like, let's yeah. try it again. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. But that's cool. No, no for comes, sure. It all comes back to the people. Yeah, that's the yeah. best way. Let's go back to the Flagstaff stuff, right? What did yeah. we... Um, let's go to Tyler. I, mean, I had to t- We had to take off the door when he, was, when he was shooting us, rolling in the black arm. That was great. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was cool. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we had two Can-Ams, one as a picture Can-Am and one as the rig Can-Am, Can-Am with the front and rear for the black arm. Um, and we wanted to shoot that and have uh, Tyler hop in the other Can-Am and shoot that with his camera because you just got the Mobi M10, right? Yes. And we are shooting with the Sony... A7S II. A7S II. And guess what? Everything on set, I think for Thomas when he showed up, had a, a Canon, but everybody on set had Sonys. I think we had like 12 Sonys. Yeah, it was like 12 or 13. Yeah, 12 or 13 Sonys. That's a crazy number. You know, like <laughs> what all, up, Sony? Hit us up. Yeah, I know. They, <laughs> we, they need to collab with us for the next release that they do because yeah. we'll do some crazy shit. Yeah, in five yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. Judging on how long that damn Unless the R comes yeah. out sooner. Yeah, they drop one of those every like every year. Yeah, they're, they're on like the R20 by up. now, probably. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to get on one of those. Anyway, we had so many so many Sonys, which was legit. You know, that was cool. You kind of have a cohesive look. So uh, Tyler, we loaded our LUTs on to his Atomos, and that way he, we can all have a cohesive look, even for the BTS and for like the Can-Am spec and our uh, aerial ad release. So we did all that. We had some crazy shit. So we had to take off one of the doors. It was easy. This bolt, that thing just, it's a giant Lego, basically. <laughs> Take that thing off. We had a door. I'm like, okay, you're going to sit right here. You're going to hold it. <laughs> so oh, that was terrible. Yeah. The first, the first run yeah. was, uh, I, I actually felt that in my back up until like oh, I a bet. day ago or something like that. So we're going off road and we're trying to chase the other one. He's holding the movie. And, <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's probably really hard. You know, it's hard to do on the road, let alone like sitting down in a Can-Am because those seats like bucket seats and they kind of lay backwards. Yeah, it, so w- like, it, it wants to push your body in. Yeah, it, it would be really difficult to just right. hold that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay, we should probably turn around. I got on the radio. Let's turn around and we'll go back. I grabbed two bungee cords. I think two, I don't know, what the, whatever bungee cords. And I looped them through Cargo the top. bungees, dude. Yeah, dude, looped them to the top because I just I was like, okay, we don't have anything else. We didn't bring another block arm. Um, we didn't plan for that. We had too much gear already. And we're like, we need to figure out a way to assist 
Tyler and holding this thing. So we went back to our roots, grabbed two bungee cords, um, and threw them over the top rail there and hung them, and he just hooked it right up, and we went on out. And it was like 100 times different, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, I've never seen this. That was millions, the first time you've millions. seen that? Yeah, it was, it's, the fr- it's like, <laughs> like you guys have a black arm, and I'm sitting here yeah. hanging out of the other one with a Movi and <laughs> two bungee cords. And it was work. It was yeah, great. It was great. It was, it was great. Yeah. The, the, it was the shots good. were great. I think there was a comment on it. Yeah, there we've was. Done that on a, yeah. It was looking great. Yeah. We've done that on a golf cart. So oh, many there times. was. I read that. Yeah. 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 We've done that on a golf cart so many times. Oh it's yeah, the golf cart <laughs> shooting soccer. Yeah. That's where it's famous for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The bungee, But that's funny. Someone did comment. What was the other one shooting on? It looks stable, more stable than the black Dude, arm. Dude, it's it's so funny though because it's like this is well when because I, this when we jealous as fuck though because there's certain there's certain times where like the simplest solution that you wouldn't even think of is the best solution. Correct. And then there's other times where, like, when we were hitting the trails, like, really hard and shit, that would have never, never worked. worked. Yeah, because like, it would have been need, like, you need the black arm. Yeah, but like in that particular case, that bungee setup yeah. is well, legit. It's like but, five dollars worth of bungee yes. cables, mm. and you have super stable footage. Yes. You just put a little bit of pressure down on your, gimbal, and you're good, and you're good, and you're good. It's and almost then, like an like, easy rig, and then the, uh, kind of yeah. The guy yeah. that hit us up is like big camera movement. And, and he was wondering what it was. And he was wondering what it was. We didn't tell him yet. <laughs> but we, we talked to him before. But and it was just like, dude, it, it's it, just it, like $5 worth of bungee cables. Yeah, we don't know yet. We were, we were going to tell him yet. We we're probably going to tell him soon. But like the, the what was I going to say? God damn it, I forgot. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. The wow. bungees aren't doing like all the work, right? It's just no. like oh, oh, oh. I remember. At the end of the day, it's someone holding it. Still yeah, but it's doing a lot. It's a meat stabilizer. It's what it is. Basically, it's just the bungee it looks so damn good. The bungee oh, cords are the first axes of the black arm. Yeah, it's the initial. It's the but one that. But if he that, just let it go, it would go. F- oh yeah, if you let it go, so the stabilization that he's yeah, the no. pressure, the stabilization. His, his arms are the dampeners. Yeah. yeah, of the black arm. Yeah, and the bungee cords are the spring on the Correct. black arm. It was, it was, yeah, it was more of like a weight release. Yeah, I guess, I yeah, would say. and it would also take it off his back too. But it also worked it's as like a stabilizer. Yeah, but we also that car was running on a smoother track, and then we ran the black arm on the rough roads. Yeah, that's because true. we the the priority was Tyler's sh- shots. Yeah, and so to we show the black arm doing work, and the black arm was and that was which the was. most rough you're gonna get, which it was. It doing was work. completely yeah. untouched like ground, so it was really rough. Craters, yeah. craters. But yeah, no, I mean that goes back. There to were the, there were giant holes in the yeah. craters <laughs> in the middle. Of the, like if you didn't see them, you would. Oh boom, yeah, massive. you like, go nose. It looks like first. craters in it. That yeah. goes back to the intro though, where we're like, it's not the the uh, the equipment. It's if you have the will, like, well, you got the knowledge and the if experience. You, if you take the time to go out and experiment, like what we said, we did a trial run. We went out, yeah. we did it without the bungees and we're like, this isn't working. Yeah. We came back, we found a solution for it. And well, yeah, the black arm was like, not acting right either. So we yeah. had to keep tuning that and yeah. doing that and coming it's, back. It's not a one and done process, no. I guess. It's a, no. it's, it's experience and trial and error. And like, you're not going to get the best shots yeah. right off the bat. And no, it doesn't just come to you, but that's why we, the self-investment thing. And so we continue to do that and continue to do these types of shoots because it allows us to train ourselves on new terrain, new uh, rigging, new um, tools, stuff like that. So we can figure out on a real set, like, Oh, we've totally done that. Or there's something similar to that. We know how to handle yeah. So like it helps us adapt to all kinds of different environments and situations and that's why we continue to do that and yeah the constant reiteration pro- process of like making the rigs ourselves too like i think mm-hmm. is what bred us to even though when once we do get the correct the correct quote unquote equipment to do that job you're yeah. still left with things that need to be it's tended like, to yeah, yeah. It's and, and then that, level. that mentality yeah. where you've bred yourself to constantly yeah. do re- yeah. reiterations of it is what's right. kind of led us to if it. you are somebody that thinks buying more equipment or more expensive equipment makes your life easier. That is the wrong method. It actually makes it harder. It makes it harder. Oh, makes it harder. There is the way more, more, yeah. more variables you're adding into the, it's like high school science class. You might variables fix one issue, but controls. you're going to be dealt with a ton of other issues. Yeah. That more expensive than before. Which, which makes me envious sometimes when I saw you on that with the, the bungee cords. I know we were all like, after. I was like, oh man, I'm jealous. That I wish good. I could just you do that like right now. At least now. three people <laughs> operating the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just hanging out in the back. I know. Which is funny because like professional, at the, the upper echelon of the professional sense, it's all about the control. Yeah, you have to have the precision. You, you like for that your... instance, we needed to grab shots and you had the ability to go, you know, at least 180, right? Yeah. You know, and, and with a tool like something else other than that, you have to have full control, mm-hmm. like on every eight position, right? Because yeah. you've got to be able to move quickly. But like for that instance, it's literally worked perfectly because yeah. that's what that's all we needed. We needed to get the car rolling down on the sun coming through it. Like it worked perfectly. And that's the, exactly and what the we stress factor is so much lower, right? Like oh, yeah. 
professional, like upper echelon stuff, it's like you have multiple days of prep, if not weeks, and then yeah. you have like thirty seconds to maybe pull some magic. Yeah. But the yeah. yeah, but the roots from the the bungee cords, like that that those are the roots, like learning from that. Yeah, yeah. You pull I, your knowledge exactly from the bungee cords, and then you and, adapt but it. But that to carries everything over to when even when you get the right equipment, you still have that like yep. that once. Oh, that's not perfect. What can I do to make this perfect? Even though I technically bought the equipment that should have done yeah. that. I mean, shit. Alex and I had the the Audi before we like did anything. Before it was wrapped. Before we did anything, any of this, any of the real motion stuff, pretty much. We had the. I had a tooley rack. We drilled a hole through the end of it on one of the on one of the racks. Bolted down a a uh, the frick. What was it? Uh, Closet. Steady cam. No, a steady cam arm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like back in the day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's back. So we, we bought bolted the steady cam off Craigslist too. Bought the steady cam off Craigslist, picked it up, went back to our thing, drilled a hole through my Thule rack, bolted the the arm to it, and we were gonna hang the whatever head we had, which was nothing. There's the MX. MX or a Movie Pro. <laughs> the Ronin MX. Off the ev- end of the it, OG. and we were thinking that was going to Poor Man's black arm. Basically be a poor man's black arm. And uh no. And then thankfully work. it was bending the shit out of our Dually right. Thankfully, so. a few weeks later, we found the grip tech arm on Craigslist as well. And then we got that. You want to know a pro tip? That works. This, this is an Better. Alex pro tip right now for all you filmmakers out there. Oh, God, here there. it comes. <laughs> we should and have a thing come up. Too. Every <laughs> single day you get up, what are you going to do? You're going to get your coffee. I'm going to make my bed. Because we're all snobby coffee people. We need our coffee. Yeah, need you're going to get your coffee. You're going to sit down at the countertop. You're going to open up Craigslist and offer up. Guess what you're going to do? Spend a good 30 minutes looking through offer up and Craigslist. You'll find some sheesh. You'll find some crazy shit every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Like every six months, you might come across some crazy. Like we were looking for an isolation arm. I'm sitting there drinking my coffee one day. I spit it out because <laughs> there was a grip tech <laughs> isolation <laughs> arm. Yeah. And we're like, dude, it was cheap. Bought that shit that day. That day. We did. We, <laughs> we did. So that's the secret. You can find deals all the time. We you still have it. It's over there. Yeah. We just never use it anymore. Still here in the office. It's not like black magic like the black arm is. Yeah, the black arm. It'll still work. Uh, but witchcraft. But yeah, so that's a pro tip for this podcast. There you go. Uh, Craigslist and offer up. Do your every research. Every single day. Do work. Yeah, don't do work. underestimate used shit. Yeah, don't do that yeah. either. Half of my shit's used. Yeah. I'm, if I'm gonna exactly. Be honest, don't like, under, no, don't it, underestimate there's like, nothing that wrong category with it. or that or market. Build it. As or long build as it, or build modify it. it. Like, get long, a 3D printer. Do whatever you want. That's your. The world is your oyster. All right. Um... <laughs> Where the crickets when that? Happened? <laughs> 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 the world's your oyster. Anyways, <laughs> no, no, no. Anyway, we're going back. Going back to Flagstaff. Pearl, what? Sure. No, we're going back to Flagstaff. Okay, so we shot all throughout that day, crazy shots. Then we did drone to drone at the very. We kind of, kind of messed up the sunset to be honest with you, but we got it. We got shots. It looked really cool. Like of the Inspire shooting the. Ultimate. Honestly, sunrise in that area. You could pass for sunset. Yeah, you, like, you could. Yeah, totally, awesome. totally, 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 yeah. totally. That was one of the very few places where like sunset worked awesome or yeah. sunrise worked awesome. Yeah. So yeah. that night we did our whole, you know, we made food, which was awesome. Alex made carnitas and shit, which is fire. So, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Get me started. Yeah, it was lit. Anyway, so we did that and we woke up really early in the morning. And that morning, um, Thomas Ingersoll, and, which we had on the podcast uh, before, previously, yeah. which I don't know what episode it was. Alex, do you know what episode it was? Uh, Doesn't I think matter. it was 10. We'll put it in the description. Yeah. We'll put it in the description. He was on there. And then um, Swan Dive. And we'll, we'll add his tags in there and everything. They showed up. Two separate guys. Really awesome dudes here in Arizona. Um, two different projects. You know, uh, Thomas like hit us up randomly like the night before we were going to leave. And he was like, hey, if you guys are doing anything cool, I'd love to hop on. I'm like, actually, we're leaving the Flagstaff. Uh, do you want to come up? He's like, oh, I can't. I got to shoot. I'll meet you up the night, uh, the morning of when you guys shoot, because we were going to do sunrise stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to yeah. be shooting really early. He's like, oh, that's fine. I'll be there at sunrise. And then Swan Dive, I was like, oh, I've got to shoot that day as well, the first day. And I was like, okay, that's okay. You can come up the next day if you want. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'll be there at sunrise because we're shooting sunrise. And both of these guys didn't know. They've worked with each other a lot. Like, they're actually good buds. I, yeah. ne- I never told them that they were coming. And so the morning of, it was like, I don't know, Colby was walking around the campsite in the middle of the night. I don't know what he was doing. He was probably going to pee <laughs> or something or I don't know what he was doing. Maybe grab a beer out of the cooler. I don't know what was going on. Um, and I was like, Chloe, Chloe, I got like a message. I thought, cause I was worried I was going to miss their text message and like, they wouldn't be able to find us. Cause we we're kind of deep out there. I mean, you wouldn't be able to find us if you just drove down the road. Yeah. We were, um, you know, not there. Um, so I was like, dude, I'm going to miss their, I'm going to miss their text and I'm not gonna be able to find them and they're, they're going to leave and it's like gonna be horrible anyway. So I didn't, I got their text one minute and I woke up and I saw it. I was like, Oh, um, Swan dives here. I gotta go get him. So I like threw my shit on. I'm like, Colby, we gotta go get him. 
He's like, oh, God, what, what are we going to take? I'm like, it was freezing cold. We didn't plan for the that weather, or at least I didn't. I mean, I brought a hoodie and pants. It, it was only enough. for a few hours of the night. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was. I looked over in my oh, tent. No. No, no, for no, no. me it was. I looked you were freezing. It was like thirty. I loved degrees. it. It was cold. No, I loved anything. it up until like I think it was like two a.m. Then I was. <laughs> I don't even remember that. I was dead. Up out. until we woke up, I, I was not okay. I no, woke up. I was out at like three, and I looked Did over, you? and Brandon is in a fernie or a moving blanket. <laughs> oh my trying god! Trying to keep warm. Are you yeah. kidding? And Colby yeah. is trying that to was my unzip blanket. the tent. And he has a zipper stuck on the tent, and all I hear is "fuck son of a bitch," <laughs> and I'm like, "What the fuck are you there doing?" There was like three zippers on that thing. One was like a screen, one was like the cover, and then the other was the actual. I need to get the oh, fuck I can out see of him struggling and right now. Dude. I was half awake. I'm just like, "All right, figure it out," and I go back to bed. <laughs> Colby's laughing in the office right now because he knows that he was an idiot. I had to get up like three times to pee, and I kept waking up. Really? Colby. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was dead. That was the first time I like slept through the night. I think I was pissing Colby off because I kept waking him up. Jesus, <laughs> probably that's probably true. You guys had like a twelve person tent, and like everybody was in there. Yeah, it was the cathedral. Oh, anyway, that thing was a cathedral. It was a cathedral. Yeah, it was. Actually, it was a mosque. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you guys a video <laughs> that I found that actually like was pretty relatable to our tents versus your tent. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. 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 We have these massive tents. I don't know if we, uh, if I could show you. Guys. <laughs> I want to see. To, let me try to find this. Uh, but yeah, so the boys no. showed up from. But yeah, the boys. So yeah, so so Swan Dive was. Uh, they showed up. We had to go jump in the Land Rover. Uh, Colby and I drove out. We were literally freezing. We put the heat on. We were like driving out. Put all the light bars on. It probably looked nuts. I was driving out there. They were like, "Who the who the hell is this guy?" It was like, <gasps> "Bing bing 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 bing." It was like four corners, and there's like RVs out there too. So we probably woke him up. Colby's like, "You should shut him off." I'm like, "No, it's nighttime. We're we're going. We got to get out there." Yeah. Uh, because we couldn't find the road. Because like, there is there is a road. Or a trail that gets out there, and we couldn't find it in the middle of the night. Anyway, we go out there, we pick up Swan Dive, we come back. I get a text from Thomas. He's like, "Oh, I'm here." I'm like, "Okay, shit." We'll go back. I got Thomas. They both got there at the same time, not knowing that they were there, and got there before sunrise. I mean, yeah, shit. I, was, I, I really appreciated that. Like they were, well, on dude, time. they <laughs> were on time. I, I tell Austin to get here at six, and he gets here at six thirty, and <laughs> well, he just, he's down this damn street, and I and you got to get them to get up to Flagstaff. <laughs> I was gonna ask Swan Dive like how the hell he wasn't cold. Dude, he had a T-shirt on. <laughs> it he had like ha- it looked it like he half button. It looked like, like the dude, loudest. Like, it the looked loudest like he landed ever. in like the plane from Hawaii. Yeah, exactly. He gets like out of that. his van and he's it. like, "Dude, I'm dude, I love I'm, it. I didn't think it was gonna be this cold." Dude, it's his brand though, and he owns <laughs> it. Yeah, he does. Mustache and loud button down. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Oh, that's great. About it. Anyway, he bought a he bought a a colleague of his to shoot. Um, he just got recently the FX9, which is really awesome camera. Um, yeah. he's doing his own like documentary kind of uh, piece on About like creatives. creatives and cool people in the area, and he's gonna make a cool piece on it. I know he will. What it's we're trying really to say awesome. is we're pretty cool. He he showed up. And yeah, I'm just yeah. yeah. That, you know. <laughs> anyway, so he brought those guys up, which was really fun. And then Thomas came up, of course. Um, he's a commercial photographer here. You guys know that. Will you look at his podcast? We'll tag yeah, him below. Go go back and listen awesome. to his podcast. He's got lots of good yeah. insights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool stories. Yeah. So they both came up, which was awesome. They're like, oh my God, you guys, you're here. And that was cool. So they knew each other. And then we're like, all right, we got to go. We loaded up the truck, threw the drone in there because we had to get up like way far away where to where we were camping to go get the sunrise shot that we kind of messed up last night in addition to like what we wanted to do in the morning too. So we were like, yeah. the can am, we wanted to do like this cool ripping shot or whatever we could, anything cool basically with the can am. Um, we went to, we tried to go find a spot and then we were like, we didn't know. But luckily, Thomas, He's been going there since he was like, I don't know, eight? I don't know. Some He said he took us right there, dude. Dude, he was like, I know this really sick spot. I'm like, dude, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, go, let's go. So we went all the way back. It took us, a, you know, I don't know, a good 20 minutes to get back there, 15 minutes. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I mean, at the speed no, was, I was going, probably was like 20, 20 minutes because I was behind the whole dirt. Like, <laughs> yeah, wave. dude, it was dusty. It was so bad. Because well, I was in the can am too. There. It was super and It was cold. The spot. Oh, that's what Brandon, Brandon and I, that, uh, we, we yelled out, or we were on comms, or did we yell out? We just yelled at each other. I'm yeah. like, this is the best way to wake up. Yeah. I was this like, you a, don't need coffee. I don't need, need coffee. A you need a can am cold weather. You wake up and go rip. And that's instant. how you wake up. I'm in the back instant. of the fucking I went, I seriously Rover, went from the tent to yeah. the can am yeah. driver's yeah. seat and yep. instantly woke up. Yeah. Oh, you're great. I was like, yeah. whoop, let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> the I needed started. seats and all that stuff. I was falling asleep. Oh my God. On the way out there. Yeah, yeah. You guys are just cruising on out. I oh, realized I, I pulled I a muscle oh, in my back like, when I rolled the UTV the day before. <laughs> I was like, fuck <laughs> this shit. Every whoop was like, Ugh. oh, that probably hurt. Anyway, we get up there. This, this the spot's beautiful. It's just really hidden. I don't know. It was crazy. Well, it, was really, it had the, it had the view like perfectly framed of the, the, the volcano. Here's the ironic part though. Is it's this, weird calling it that. The spot, the spot that we found 
the night before that looked epic with the sunset. Oh yeah, we went there that night. That's what mm-hmm. that's what our plan was to get hit in the morning. Right. It's like that same spot. I found we got there and it looked kind of like shit. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, yeah. so well, it was, sh- it was it was sh- it was uh, it was shit, the, the, the light didn't sunset hit. and yeah. sunrise are two. Well, we didn't get like, up there. Completely though. different animals. They're two different. Animals. We were on the plane. We didn't get up. Yeah, but we never. I'm climbed. glad we did. But the trucks wouldn't have been able to get up there. I'm glad we didn't. So the spot where we went was a yeah. little bit l- like I want to say lower. I and less of a de- uh, incline. No, 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 it, was just, it wasn't lower. It was higher up, but it was just easier to get to. It was easier to get to. Easier to I crashed because really it was a forest that, road. I crashed really early that night. But John was telling me that you guys went on like an adventure. We did went on an adventure in the middle and, of the night. Yeah, but going and up we that found hill it. at night would I, I oh, no. can only imagine it was probably insane. It was insane. Well, we, we went Tyler the back and I, way, and the, yeah. the way that we went, the, the hill never stopped. It yeah, <laughs> going. no, just I kept can going only up. imagine. Tyler's and, like, when's it gonna stop, dude? And, and not to mention when when it's black everywhere else, but the trail. And it, you have these lights that are only two it lights. It must look like you guys are level, except for like your body feels like you're. At oh no, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Completely. So it must really. It was black. With your like it was equilibrium. Like the lights were only like this big, right? On thing, it was like tiny. I that's, could only see so much, so that the rest of it was black. You could see like five feet in front of you. And then, <laughs> he was yeah. freaking. He was like, "I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, know." Coming down wasn't necessarily the best either. No, you can't see literally anything. <laughs> so when you're rolling yeah. over the edge, you think it's just gonna drop, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was crazy. I'm surprised you guys found the. I'll campsite. have to do that next time. I don't know how we found it. I really don't. But I somehow navigated it there. Yeah, I don't even yeah. know how we got back. Like I don't know how we got back. We went yeah. so far out of the way, but it was really cool. And the moon was full moon that night, and Tyler got some like really cool like long exposure shit up there it looks like daylight but i literally could i didn't i don't i don't even think i needed lights on this i could just probably see with the moon it's pretty crazy it was, it was really bright moon. yeah and it was clear sky which was awesome too we hit it we hit it right we like ironically hit it on a full moon yeah cycle which was the moon cool was like in its in its prime some people fell asleep though and didn't get to make it up unfortunately but <laughs> yeah. i, I didn't want right. to we'll do it next time I'm i sorry. didn't want to leave that fire <laughs> oh yeah we did it well it was a gas fire <laughs> perfect yeah, Never speaking of out. that fire, we were, we were, we were, the whole time you we were going to get uh, mm-hmm. Swan Dive, uh, we were oh. like By trying to get it lit. To, we were all standing around that thing. Like, and you know what the funny thing is? Like, that whole, that, I know that was a whole problem. You guys were like trying to find this lighter. Anyone, where's the lighter? We go all freezing, <laughs> like sitting there. And then guess what? At the end of the day, I when I rolled it, yeah. I, I swear to just listen. No, 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 listen to this. Just listen. Just listen. Just listen. I rolled it over. And as I roll it over and it stops, I look to my left. And it's right in front of my eyes. <laughs> it fell in the dirt, in the dirt. <laughs> and I go, I yell to the guys. I didn't even say, I'm like, okay. I'm like, I found the lighter. No, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm at the car and I'm watching John, like, you know, go up the hill and stuff and like whip that thing. Like, cause Thomas was shooting like cool, like yeah, close up, exactly. drifting photos. But all of a sudden I hear, oh, fuck. And, like, <laughs> I, I immediately see the thing spin. And then all of a sudden it stops. I found the lighter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this thing's upside down. I don't know if John's okay or not. I found the lighter. I'm like, this God, of dude. course. Oh, it literally landed this in front is of my how face. the lighter decides to, yeah. to, right? to fall upon us. It, I think both of the rollovers were pretty comical. We were just oh, sitting yeah. there, look behind us, and oh, they're great. Well, we didn't expect it. I don't know. What we, it is deep when when that volcanic rock it gets deep in that in that front tire. Yeah, we have, like, when she hooks, she once hooks. she hooks that She's front over. tire, it'll it just go, it rolls. Yeah. There's nothing. I just remember it. after rolling, I'm just hanging in my <laughs> fucking harness, and I look over at Austin, and I'm like, "You good?" And he looks back at me, and he's like. Yeah, are you good? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And we're just like, let's get the fuck well, out of this You thing. weren't even going fast. You were just doing donuts, right? No, we were. Ju- I was drifting around a turn, oh. and then there was a bush. So I was like, I can either go inside or outside of the bush. And I'm like, oh, too late. It let's was too go, late. Let's go inside. If only one driver would have already had that mapped out. And I dude. let I let off, <laughs> and it just that front tire hooks, and you're you're over. It's yeah, it's, it's it's really quick. It was the most gentle rollover no, I've too. ever been in. I've never. I thought like you know you roll over a car, it's like. You know, all the movies are like the most. No. You're like fucking die, but this thing was just like. Dee, dee, no, dee, you dee, just dee. get out, and then you fucking roll it back over and start driving again. Yeah, you push it over. Except mine was on a hill, which was kind of sketch. Like you're if I went, if I it. over, if I just kind of overturned a little bit more, you would have rolled down. Yeah, I would have rolled down, down the hill. hill. That but hurt. I luckily that stopped, sucked. and we were on a hill though. It was a pretty, you know, pretty steep incline, right? And I had to like. We're like, if we roll this over, it's probably going to roll down the hill. So I had to like get in there and throw it in a park. And luckily it like grabbed and stopped. So anyway, it was cool. It was fun. Moral of the story, go straight from your tent to the can am. More moral of the story, <laughs> uh, send it for the shots. Yeah. yeah, just leave. Yeah. No, that's legit. But we, yeah, had, we had a good time. So Everybody that was kind of the end of the end of the day. Everybody got of. dirty. Oh, my God. So I, my dirty. lungs were full. Of, oh, man. Because I, have, I, was, <laughs> I have asthma and I woke up the next yeah. night in my bed, like literally... Dying. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we have a shot. I had to get my breathing machine and I was like, <gasps> like Wait. setting that thing up. I had to, yeah, it was bad. We have a shot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yes. Like yeah. We're looking at a photo right now. Oh, our, B- our BTS photos. We'll post it and we'll definitely I highlight know, this. No, it's already that. posted. Oh, you posted I this already? I didn't see that. Oh my let's god. Do, let's do an ice buy with real bros. Oh, that. dude, <laughs> this is an ice buy. We have the rigs like on the innovative cart. I'm standing there on my phone, and then if you go in between the Ronin two and myself, you zoom in. There's another RB pissing on a tree. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who that is. Guilty as charged. Ar- Alex. If for some Alex. reason, Alex would not walk far. He would just go like right to the next tree next to us. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh, that's what you did? Oh, that's cool. Dude, we anyway, have, stop we have a shot of uh, Tyler getting dusted oh. from the Cameron car. Oh, my God. This is good. <laughs> we're going to definitely post this. Yeah. Because I thought that's what you were initially going to bring up when we were t- brought Oh, I totally like, forgot. I thought we were going to end with that. Okay, okay, well, we can end with it now. But, like, we were going... We were sh- what were we doing? We were doing black... He was in the, we this were, is when yeah, we were doing we the were BTS. Doing, yeah. We were doing Can-Am to Can-Am. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yep. When, this is when Tyler had the door With off. The bungee bungee cords. Yes, yes, yes. And we were going on these ridge. We had a ridge here. There was like a ridge and a big dip and then another ridge. And then I told Chance, which is driving the other car, to go on the other ridge to get up on top of that. And we'll like track you down on top of the ridges. Well, as we're going down, we hit like this. Nothing. There was no water. There's no mud. There's no nothing. It was just like this. It was a pit of soot. It was this, really soft. Like, it, was a it was like moon pit. dust. Yeah. Like this silkiest dust dirt you could ever like you were we were floating i didn't feel any bumps in that thing it was just like i felt like it was in like slushy mud but it was yeah. dry dry dirt and we we're going through it <laughs> and from the camera car you guys disappeared oh we disappeared we went Gone. in this rut this giant rut that had this soft dirt in it and we're going and like this the the, the can-am slowed down it was like it like bogged because yeah. we were like oh, digging it into it, it. Deep. it and all of a sudden deep. I look deep. back and I couldn't see Tyler. I'm like Tyler, <laughs> the dust is like <laughs> flowing it was over like, him. It was like a scene of Mad Max, right? Oh in front yeah, hundred percent. Did you guys get a shot of that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We got it from car? both angles. We yeah. got yours and we got ours. Yeah, it's that's fucking amazing. cool. No, it's that awesome. We'll post both. Like we're a, in the camera car, like oh fuck. Oh, I was in the car, like oh, we were all oh fucking. I was. That's weird. I was laughing. I was just. Dying yeah, you were. Because my camera was just covered. It in was dust. completely just, gone. I couldn't yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah. And we had to get out, like, blow it off. But thank God luckily, for weather. It was all right. right? Yeah, it was I had okay. to do some deep cleaning for that. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah, like, yeah. There, was, there was moon rocks in my, in the back of, like, the, the pop out screen. <laughs> yeah. It was just yes, crushed yes. up moon rocks. Are you so kidding? Like, yeah. Dude, Dude after, that, oh, after no. that, everyone's eyes look, like, like really glossy. Did you notice that everyone's yeah. had like really marbly eyes because the yeah. dust in our eyes? Yeah, because we were. Dude, it was really weird though. The ironic, like wax I was me. driving the, da- the the picture can am the whole time, and I got toasted majority the majority of the time. The ironic thing yeah. is, up on Cinder Hill, all that volcanic rock is magnetic. So what? Like, when we crashed the FPV drone? Oh no way! It got stuck. All in those the, little tiny rocks. Did it? They just want to stick to the magnets. <laughs> oh, you had to. That's why you had to water yeah. it, wash it out. You're just like fuck. So did he but, start that up dude, after F- he did yeah. it? Yeah. Oh wow. Dude, you just grab water. You pour water through the motors and spin them up a little bit, and good to go. I didn't cool. Know. I that's why those drones are awesome. That's pretty cool. sweet. Yeah. Very, very resilient. Anyway, yeah. that was pretty crazy. Anyway, the overall trip was awesome. So we're gonna have some content popping out here. Well, right now actually, because we're gonna post a podcast right about. The time when, yeah, when, you hear this, this, when you hear this, there'll be other content. Yeah, you'll you be able consume. to go see it, and we'll tag everything in the description. Yeah, and everyone's handles and all this, you know, all the bullshit, yeah. all the jazz. Plug your shit right now, Tyler. Yeah. Though, oh, yeah. Uh, where can the people find you? YouTube, where can the people Instagram? find you? I'd say YouTube. My YouTube's low key popping off right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I got a thousand, dude. like a, new, a thousand subscribers in oh. the past like two oh, weeks. Shit. Really? So, yeah, that's awesome. Wow. That's yeah, ours lot, sucks. Our subscribers are not subscribing. Yeah, I, no. it's so random. Like a bunch. But of your TikToks from, popped off too. Oh my god, I haven't even posted a TikTok, and I don't know why. I don't know why I'm. But the the hog and racing one popped off, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That was yeah. that was lit. But yeah, you can check me out on YouTube at youtubecom photos or just look me up Tyler Chandler, and then the same with Instagram, it's just Tyler Chandler, but with two R's. Lit. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, dude, thanks for repping with us always. Thanks for doing yeah. dope shots. Thanks for coming on the podcast, and yeah. we'll definitely have you on the next cool adventure that we have, which I'm pretty sure is probably going to be boats after this. So we're going to do some boat stuff and jet ski stuff. Yeah, let's flip one which of we've those. done before, but we've done before, but this is going to be different. It's going to be drone gonna, stuff. Yeah, it's going to be different. Yeah, which will be fun. But we're going to do other cool shit too. Uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Well, anyway, dude. Well, tune sweet. in for uh, next time.